Hi, everyone. This is Mary Keurig with Frontrunners Innovate. We are a media and community, media platform and community for frontrunners of impact. So I have with me somebody very impactful who is Elaine Sugar. And Elaine is the CEO, the founder and CEO of Kids More Sugar LLC. And she's also the podcast genius behind, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm what is it now? Empower Teen Self-Esteem Podcast. Yes. And yes. oh, wow. What a, what a great little opportunity. I was just a guest. So uh, I appreciate <laughs> the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite subjects with his youth. And so we're going to get to yes. talk to you about that and about the summit that I see behind you that, that yes. you're um, sitting from, in front of. Um, so let's talk about first what brought you to doing the kind of work that you're doing, because you have an interesting story about how you got there. Yes, you know, I am very fortunate in that I was working for a company that allowed us to volunteer in the community. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to this uh, community center, uh, which is the Police Athletic League of Philadelphia. And yes. they have children there from the ages of six to 18 that are doing sports and after school programs. I started volunteering to help children do homework. And they asked me to facilitate or teach a girl's self-esteem building class. And I started teaching that and I absolutely loved it. And that's when I figured out that I have a passion for teaching children's programs. So uh, I did that for about eight years there. And now I am running my own online friends program, but then also still partnering with Philadelphia Police Athletic League to run a uh, a program that teaches children how to manage money that's for the teens and then we're also going to be doing some positive thinking and positive speaking uh classes in the fall so i'm excited to be partnered with them again and i love having my own company that's devoted to it that's fantastic when you told me that the first time i thought what an interesting group to be partnered with but yes. how valuable for them and for everybody i mean if you can can get get through to the teens with some of these That's skills, right. then honestly, you've just done nothing but improve the community. Uh, yes, and, and their hours are actually very intentional. They've done research and they found out that some of the children who were getting in trouble, get, in the troubles, get into trouble between the hours of three and nine. So they make their center open. So you have a place where you can go, you can play, have fun, but you do it in an environment with the support um, and protection of a couple of police officers. So it's a great, uh, great, great program. Well, I'm just going to say in the United States, where I know there's so much conflict and controversy about police right now, yes. to be able to see and hear something so positive um, that is involved Absolutely. in the youth is, I think, a really an amazing role model sort of situation for others to follow suit. And I hope they do. Yes. So yes. You, do, you deliver the programs now, I guess, during the pandemic, you've had to start doing those uh, virtually. How will it roll out when you hit fall? In the fall, we are going to do in-person classes. So we just established that. Um, it was a, a little challenging continuing the online because a lot of children were going to school online. Yeah. And then as the weather is getting nicer, we understand we want to be outside, children want to be outside. <laughs> so we just wrapped up a program uh, Monday, and now we're going to wait until the fall, and we're going to do things in person. So this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I think that'll make a big difference. So um, talk to me about, you know, the types of kids that are coming to the, the, the different uh, opportunities that you have here. What, sure. what are the ages and what are they, I mean, so that somebody can self-identify if they're watching this, I could, I could do something like this. And is it just in your area for the, I mean, I know you've got some virtual situations that they can tie into because, you know, we're global. So we want to make sure that other people that see this might have an opportunity to engage as well. Absolutely. So I can break it down for you. So I have my own company, which is Kids More Sugar. And just so parents are not panicking, uh, sugar is my last name, just like the sweetener. But when I say Kids More Sugar, I'm not saying more, you know, candy. 
I uh, uh, actually using an acronym. So in my company name, sugar stands for saying unforgettable, good affirmations regularly. And I decided to focus my company around teaching children the power of positive thinking and speaking, Mm -hmm. because I was doing some research. And there was a scientist that Uh, I had data that showed that 95% of the messages that children receive about themselves are negative. That hurt my heart. Mm -hmm. I said, you have got to be kidding me. Children are so wonderful and valuable. How can 95% of the messages they're receiving about themselves be negative? And I feel like we have to fight against that. We have to battle against that. So I started studying affirmations, which if there's some young people listening who aren't sure what that is, that's when you speak about yourself doing something positive as if it already is. So if you want to win the football game Friday, when you're practicing, you're saying to yourself, I won the game, Mm -hmm. not I'm going to win. I won. And you tell yourself that over and over again. So as you play that, you're just starting to train your brain to be a winner. When you say positive things to yourself and you do it repeatedly, you start to train your brain. Your brain will actually listen to you. And I don't think we as a society, as a world, have done a good enough job explaining that to children and helping them learn that at an early age. And my company, that's the main mission of my company. That's wonderful. You know, you made me think about, I think it was, it was an Olympic athlete, but I don't remember who it was. He used to talk about training in his own living room. And he'd Mm -hmm. go around his living room. I don't know if he was a sprinter or what he was. And he's jumping over couches and chairs and everything. And throughout the whole process, he was thinking in just like the way that you said, um, that he had already won the gold. He had already won it. And I want you to know he did win it. (laughs) See, that's great. Right. He was, but he did win it. That's Um, right. I have like three like world-class athletes in my front runners league. And one of them is a three-time world champion sprinter from the UK. And Mm -hmm. he is a wild personality. He's just, he's, he's out there. He's so forward and so uh, presentational, you know, he's got Mm -hmm. charisma and Mm -hmm. he, there isn't anything I think that that guy thinks he can't do. I I mean, you know, you've got to have that kind of mindset and that self-confidence, but just like you said, is being able to use those affirmations in a way that's going to support you. Because if you just keep saying, you're saying it in a way that you don't have, that makes the, you know, your brain think, well, I'm still looking for it. It's not there yet. Then it will, you'll still be looking for it. And it's not there yet. (laughs) That's right. You need to put it in your brain in a different way. So I just love the way that you, you think in that regard, but uh, so absolutely. You brought up something else about the negative messaging that the kids are getting. Yes. Probably at school, there's bullies, there's judging, judging on what yes. you're wearing, judging what you look like. If you're overweight, weight too skinny, uh, not smart, too smart, you know, all of those things that kids do because they're trying to compare themselves so they can feel better. Um, do you think that probably messaging is coming from, especially during the pandemic, from internet sources, from television, from you know, from what, maybe in video games, I'm not sure. Can I say yes and all of the above? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's very powerful messaging from the adults that are in a leadership in a child's life. So that's from home to school mm-hmm. to, you know, people at church, mm-hmm. your community center, wherever you have have an adult in authority also can learn and make some adjustments in the way we communicate. You know, I need to dis- have discipline with you, but I don't need to put you down in order to do that. So if you did something you were not supposed to do, absolutely there are consequences <laughs> and punishments, but it's about that action that you took. It's not about you. I know as a child, I grew up and it wasn't something that my parents said, but I heard it a lot. People would say, oh, that's a bad child. 
So mm-hmm. you're telling yourself, you, you're telling this child, you are bad. You're programming them. Our brains are like computers. So you're putting that program, you're, tell, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. What you did was bad. Yeah. You are not bad. You did a bad thing and you don't have to continue doing that. You are actually a good child. Put that program out. So I was talking <laughs> to a parent. She said, you know, when we were growing up, we didn't have these affirmations and, you know, our parents didn't teach us this, but you know what? I think there were some people that started to figure it out, but I don't think we caught along, caught on quick enough. And I just asked a person, I said, have you ever watched a video clip of the famous boxer champion Muhammad Ali? Mm -hmm. If you watch him, he is telling you, I am the greatest. I am beautiful. I am pretty. And look at what he went on to accomplish. (laughs) And then I would say for some younger people out there who say, oh, what is this lady Miss Sugar talking about? (laughs) Start looking at some of your athletes who have won championships. Mm -hmm. Start looking at uh, YouTube videos about the lives of some people who lead companies, who Mm -hmm. have accomplished great things, who you admire, and listen to their stories. Nine times out of 10, they're going to start to tell you, I believed in myself. I believed I could do it before I did it. Michael Jordan believed he could be a championship basketball player. Mm -hmm. So there is something to it. We have not taught it enough. Now, positive thinking is so powerful that you can receive benefits from it physically and mentally, even if it's fake. How many things, (laughs) come on, Mary, how many things can you fake and get benefit? You get a, if you fake smile and there's science to support it. So my young people who get on the computer, if you don't believe it, if there are some parents who have a promise you there's actually physical Mm -hmm. benefits for you faking a smile. There are benefits for you saying, I am a doctor. If you think you want to be a doctor when you grow up, start saying right now, I am a doctor. Tell your brain you are. Your brain listens to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. um, Wow, this is funny. Um, You know, I was thinking about the, there were two examples of where a teacher had told um, someone that that I know of, two two examples where they were told that you'll never amount to anything. And I can't even fathom that a teacher would actually say that to a student. One of those was Jimmy Buffett. (laughs) <laughs> At right. Other one, <laughs> the other one that I can think of was the producer, writer, screenwriter, director, Wes Craven. And mm-hmm. so, you know, the funny thing is both of those gentlemen would tell you, because I've heard it before in interviews, is that that is actually the motivator that got them to say, oh yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Because Watch they believe me. it. <laughs> right. And and, and I say, we just have to be careful when we make statements like that, because I think sometimes we as adults can be frustrated in the moment. Um, we need to separate the action from the child and make sure when we are disciplining, we are pointing out to them how they can do things differently and need to do things differently, that you don't program them to think that there's something less than they are. That's what I would say. It's a very important lesson. And I would say we need to make sure that we don't do it to ourselves either. (laughs) So if you get on Zoom and you tell a group of adults, I want everybody to go around the room and say something about themselves that they love. You will see that group of adults soon start to kind of look a little insecure and act a little uncomfortable, almost like a child being asked the very same question. So this is about all of us learning. This is about all of us doing better, myself included. Yeah, I appreciate that. The learning lesson. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) for sure. So tell me about the summit, the event that you've got uh, behind you. So let's talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. So I want to give credit to the small business owners everywhere who are doing great work in the space of mental wellness. Mm -hmm. As we know, 
the world has already had a crisis with mental health and mental mm -hmm. wellness. The pandemic has just magnified that, intensified it. And we know that directly as a result of the shut-ins and children being pulled out of school, that there have been some mental impacts. Mm -hmm. This event is about putting a spotlight on small business owners and individuals who are doing positive things to help adults and children just collect, gather, maintain that mental wellness and positive mindset. It's about making sure that you know who is doing this work in your community. So one, if you need the service, you know where it's available. And two, if you value this type of work, work, which I think we all do, to patronize these businesses. I hear a lot of people acknowledging on TV, we have to do something about the restaurants, the small business owners, the, the, the Uber drivers. Let's not forget the mental wellness professionals who are also doing things and they may not have a $50,000 marketing budget. So you may not know that they exist. This event is to reverse that. So we're going to offer free events to the public the week of September 12th through the 18th to make you uh, aware of what's in your community and around the world. And we're doing this globally because I've been able to connect with and just see the work, the great work that people are doing. And some of the things we don't think about, I was listening to a lady talk about the work that she does, which is very similar to what I do. Yeah. And whenever I tell somebody, oh, I work with children, I help build their self-esteem and teach them to think and speak positively about themselves. 100% of the time, people's response to me is, oh, Elaine, that's great work. I was talking to a lady who's doing the exact same thing in another country and it's dangerous. Ooh. It's dangerous because in her country, you're not supposed to build girls up and tell them they're important and speak positively about themselves. So we, to your point, we're in a global world. It's not just about what's happening in my community. I need to understand that too. But that was an example there of like, wow, Elaine, no one has ever made you fear for your life for <laughs> telling the little girl to be all she can be. So yeah. I, I absolutely see your point about making sure you understand that, you know, it's a bigger world than just what's around the corner from you. So this is September 12th through the 18th. Mm -hmm. And if anybody is interested, um, you can go to uh, find me on social media, my company, kidsmoresugar.com, or I'm also on social media, Elaine Sugar, E-L-A-I-N-E dot sugar, S-U-G-A-R. And Kids More Sugar is K-I-D-S-M-O-R-E-S-U-G-A-R.com. Great. So the way I understand this is if I, as a business owner, wherever I may be, well, you know, I'm not in the same place where you are, is yes. if I had a sort of uh, wellness project program, uh, a mental Absolutely. wellness project or program within my company that for not only my uh, employees, maybe, or my team or my partners, but also for my customers, um, then I could participate in your event correct? And just, yeah. So yeah. And I will say we are looking for a small business owner. So again, if you're a little bit of a larger company, we appreciate your success mm -hmm. and you're definitely welcome to support us uh, as a sponsor, but we're going to have the activities be hosted by these mom and pop type shops, the smaller neighborhood community yeah. type therapist, you know, yoga studios, things uh -huh. that help us relax. Look for examples. So thank wellness, you. Wellness, positive mindset. Yes, absolutely. And you'll be able to do it on your platform. So whatever you're used to, if you're used to having people come to your yoga studio and based on what the situation is, where you are, as far as if things are mm -hmm. opened or closed, then you can offer a free class. What we're going to do is promote that, have one central website where everybody can go to and find out what activities yeah. are taking place that week 
wherever they are. So that's the goal. So this is grassroots. So we are looking for support. We're looking for people who are ready to pitch in and help. So that would be very much appreciated. So uh, Elaine, what I would love to say is if you've got this on LinkedIn, uh, where you yes. post, if you'll, you know, connect with us, tag me, then I'll mm-hmm. make sure we'll Absolutely. get it on to the front runners league and let them know. Awesome. So that they awesome. can, we have several uh, companies that are, that of course, being impact oriented, we would have <laughs> several small businesses yes. that are doing things in wellness. Um, Excellent. So this, this is really important. Uh, we've heard, like you said, over and over again, that um, mental wellness was such a, a problem and still is. And I can only imagine what people in India are going through. You know, like I said, you know, the, the, the words that we're getting from the pastor is the screaming for help. And then my own business partner in India, who was trying to work with us, he's one of our contacting points for getting the, the devices through, literally almost in tears. And he's up 20 wow. hours a day he finally had to go to sleep go to bed (laughs) you need to take care of yourself or else we can't you know you're not going to be of any use to us I think he went to bed for two hours and then he was back up again (laughs) it's like it's okay there there are some ugly things happening in the world but there are some real heroes out there and and that's what this is about this is about making sure you are aware of the the heroes that are around you and the help that's available to you because some of these businesses that will participate um, charge for their services Mm -hmm. and we want to patronize people who are doing good work but also also there are some who are nonprofits, and there may be some services that you can take advantage of that you're not even aware of so Mm -hmm. i would say if you're a small business owner individual and you want to participate um, then that's great. But if you're just someone sitting at home and you just want to follow me on social media, follow the progress. So when we get to the point where we're ready to launch this, you can participate, then please do. And there are going to be a lot of serious topics discussed, but just know that there's going to be fun too for children and adults, because we're starting this off on September 12th. And in the U.S., September 12th is National Day of Encouragement. And September 13th is Positive Thinking Day. So this is also for people that are doing, you know, lighthearted exercises and fun things too. So I think it's going to be a powerful event and I'm looking forward to it. I'd love to see sort of a global envisioning positivity. <laughs> peace yes. yes. So we can all have some peace, you know? Yes. Fabulous. Elaine, you're wonderful. And I love the work that you're doing. And so I just I can't say enough good about you. And I think, I hope everybody will follow you and uh, participate in this, in this event. I'm trying to figure out what kind of cool events I can have for adults and youth like teenagers, yes. you know, I think I would say this, you know, you know, I've been doing the global poetry project with my daughter's global leadership mentoring group. Yes. And um, every day I get new poems that are submitted to us by teenage girls. And I think over the last two and a half, three weeks, the poems I've been receiving have been very dark. They've not been happy poems. Wow. And it's, it's what's on their minds. It's, mm-hmm. you know, if you ask a girl what's on your mind, you, you write about something that's, that's, you know, that's concerning you or that you're interested in um, Mm -hmm. usually you're going to get whatever's deep and the deep stuff is going to is going to be coming to the surface to to be their art form that's their therapy and wow Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that they're dealing with right now so thank you for all that you're doing and we'll just continue working and chipping away at at uh, helping to empower these young ladies and uh, helping the parents and the adults learn how to deal with and you know help the youth uh, yes. of tomorrow. So uh, thank you again. And uh, we'll be you. talking as we move along. I'm sure we'll be checking in. So thanks, Elaine. And this is again, Mary Keurig with Front Runners Innovate. And we welcome you to, to join us over at frontrunnersinnovate.com. And if you'll look at the participate button, you'll find ways to engage with us, which has to do with dropping into the Front Runners League or uh, getting some, you know, business development coaching, or just, uh, maybe you want to be a channel host on our, on our platform. We'll talk to you about that too. So thanks everybody. Thank you, Elaine. Till next time. Thank you.